to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. We are going to examine what does it take to remain relevant regardless of the kinds of seasons that God brings what does it take to still be in God's program no matter what it is that he's doing that he will not be able to do it without you that he can say although seasons are changing dimensions are changing prophetic faces are changing but you still remain constant there are churches today that have dried out of the agenda of God they are just carrying what we are calling motions. Forcing a lot of relevance from every angle. But the sincere truth is that they are not carrying any candlestick again. Are you hearing me? And we are going to examine why. What does it take to be featured in God's current move? What does it take to be part of what God is doing in the now? not what he did yesterday seasons change the emphasis of god changes but what does it take a man what do, what does it take a man to keep walking with god that regardless of the season you see you remain relevant when i started out there were many pastors there are not so many in zaria and around again there used to be many people men of god different caliber and type of people some were doing ministry as if it's 100 meters hallelujah today some of them are not even in the faith not to talk of the ministry hallelujah some of them have fallen out of relevance many of them have entered into all kinds of things may god keep us i said may god keep us very quickly let's examine what does it take to be part of god's program for every season and not to be edged out when a new move comes number one character everybody write character now look up please in subsequent teachings before the year wraps up i'm going to teach us on the mystery of the moon and the sun hallelujah how that the moon is a type of the church and the sun is a type of god the christ hallelujah the moon does not have any light of its own is that true it is whatever it gets from the sun that it reflects to the inhabitants and that until believers come to that point where we have no life in ourselves outside of god and all that people see is a reflection of all that he is Number one, character. In Genesis 1.26, he said, Let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. The word image there means his nature, his attributes, his character. Let us make man to have our own type of character. And then his likeness means let him function like us. The same way we speak and things happen. Let him speak and things happen. Hallelujah. The same way we can change impossible situations. Many people have assumed the likeness of God, but not his image. Hallelujah. There are many of us men of God. We are pressed to the dimension of God's likeness. His faith. We can speak like God speaks. We have his intelligence. We have his audacity. But we lack his image, his character, his nature. And on that character, there are two things we'll look at. Number one, A, 
integrity b humility hallelujah you want to be relevant in god's agenda regardless of what seasons i'm giving you the key integrity we'll look at some scriptures very quickly proverbs 2 verse 21 God fired this thing in my spirit and I told him, I said, Lord, I want to remain relevant. Just write it. I'll run through them very quickly. These are scriptures on integrity. So A, integrity on that character. Proverbs 2 verse 21. It says, For the upright shall dwell in the land and he that has integrity shall remain in it. Some versions say the perfect. Hallelujah. He said the upright will dwell in the land. But it is men of integrity that will remain. There are people who come and they go. But there are some people that remain. Hallelujah. Do you know what integrity is? Integrity is the ability to maintain your values. Regardless of the consequences. Regardless of the circumstances. The ability to maintain your values. There are many people that were something, they stood for something else years ago. But right now they have compromised on their values. Integrity. Hallelujah. That you represent something to the body and after 20 years you still represent it. Regardless of the consequences, whether you have members or not, whether you be famous or not integrity many people like integrity hate I, I mean lack integrity we dance to any tune that comes so long as it can sell hallelujah psalm 41 verse 11 to 13 very quickly still talking on integrity i just want the bible to speak for itself lord grant us grace we have to run Psalm 41. I don't want to have to put a B part for this teaching. Psalm 41. From verse 11 to 13. Okay. By this, I know that thou favorest me. Because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Verse 12. It says, and as for me, thou upholdest me in my integrity. And settest me before my face. 13. He said, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, amen and amen. He says, my integrity, you upheld me because of my integrity. Can I tell you something? If you become a minister with integrity, if you become a man or woman of integrity, that you refuse and say, I am not changing. What is seen today is seen after 30 years. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What brings the favor of God today will bring the favor of God after 30 years. No bribe, no corruption, no tricks, no pranks, no matter what it will cost you. Everybody say integrity. We lack this grossly in the body of Christ. Job, in Job chapter 2. Let's look at verse 3. Job 2. Verse 3. It was a great man. The Bible says, this was God himself speaking to Satan. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? He says, a perfect and upright man. This is God speaking about a man. That feared God and eschewed evil. He said, and still he holdeth fast what? His integrity. Although thou movest me against him, this sorry Satan. I mean, this is God now. He said, Thou movest me to destroy him without a cause. Although he has pain, although this guy who was the greatest man in Israel, no crowd again, nobody was talking about him. He used to be the talk of the town. The Bible says that he still held fast his integrity. Many people. You are a sister that promised yourself that no brother will sleep with you until you are married. But as your age is going by, are you getting me now? You say, okay, under certain circumstances, we can bend. 
Everybody say integrity. Many people lack integrity in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Many people lack integrity. A man of God who starts out well, preaching the truth, saying a lot of things. The day a millionaire comes into his church, he now goes to meet the person to corner him and start doing certain things. I'd like you to say in the name of Jesus, I will hold integrity no matter what it will cost me. Let's run. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at verse 9. Verse 9 of same Job 2. Verse 9. Everybody read. What, do, what did his wife tell him? The wife got so tired of his integrity. Your integrity can frustrate a lot of people. And they will tell you, why not bend? Are you not a Nigerian? Hallelujah. Have you seen people that sleep around and men of God convince them and say, who is not doing it? Everybody is doing it. Let me tell you, not everybody is doing it. There are some people that have refused to bow to bear. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't let anybody fool you. Say, ah, everybody is doing it. Every man of God you see touch something, just forget. It's not true. There are some people that have made a determination in their heart that they will hold fast their integrity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, every miracle is stage managed. Forget Jare. I keep telling people, if you think the miracles, well, I know there are places they stage manage miracles, but if you think it's easy to act a miracle, try it. Produce a Nigerian film called The Miracle and act as many miracles as you can act and see how it will wear you away. The wife, a time can come, even your father can say, what is it about sleeping with that director? We are suffering in this house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Does sleeping with somebody kill somebody? Or will you bend? Hallelujah. Last week after the service, a couple came and met me. And they said um, that they were not able to bring their tithe. And that this is the tithe. This is for koinonia. Koinonia tithe is not my tithe. I told them, I said, go and give the treasurer. Hello? There are some of you that say, ah, this is after service. What is there? Me and the ministry, what is the difference? Do you hold fast your integrity? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's look at one more scripture. Let's just stop there. Number two, humility. I have to run. There are a lot of things I need to talk about and I want us to pray. Number two, that's under character. Humility. Listen. Everybody say pride. Say it again. Pride. Let your ears hear what your mouth is saying. Say pride. Can I tell you something? Pride is worse than fornication. Many people do not know the danger of pride. If you see a man that was operating in a level of open heavens and suddenly you find out the ministry dead, no anointing again, no revelation, no insight. I tell you, at the root of everything, pride. It's what our Bible tells us. Let's read quickly a few scriptures. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Write it. Proverbs 29, verse 23. Pride is a killer. A killer of grace. A man's pride shall do what? Shall do what? A man's pride shall bring him low. But honor shall hope the humble in spirit. See a man who is humble. Humility is the ability to let men see God regardless of the degree of honor. To let men see God at all times. Hallelujah. There are people that come for counseling. Some of them old enough to be my parents. When they come, I give them a seat to sit down and they cannot even sit down. They just lie on the floor and they are rolling. And I'm wondering who are they rolling for? 
a time. See, let me tell you. As you begin to rise, there are some things that you don't pray for now. But when authentic grace comes upon your life, you will value them as great prayer points. It's better not to rise at all. Are you getting what I'm saying? Than to rise and come down and be quiet. Are you seeing the reason why some people cannot be featured in what God is doing? A time came, the men became big men of God. Whether they pray or not, the power of God will still move. And you know, we men of God can fake it. Nobody will know. We can come on stage and do all the jamboree. Samson said, I will arise as before. Suddenly he found out that there was no hair again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pride goes before I fall. Matthew 23, verse 12. I wrote down a number of scriptures because I want you to have it. Matthew 23, verse 12. Scriptures on pride. Hallelujah. Let's read. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall do what? What's the secret of exaltation? Beyond your seed, I want to tell you that the state of humility, if you make up your mind that people will see God in my life, I don't care what comes. Hallelujah. There are many of us who begin to rise in grace in different levels of life and you start creating a strata between you and others. You see your friends and they greet you. Now, I know that there is honor. Are you hearing me? There is a place for honor, but honor is not stupidity. You pass and you see your friends drinking Gary. You say, ah, may God help you. Next verse. Proverbs 22 verse 4. We want to consider this. Character is so important. I'm dwelling there. When I'm done, we'll just run through the others and pray. Everybody read. Just write it and read. They are projecting it to make it fast for us. We took some time to worship. One to read. By humility... And the fear of the Lord are what? How many arrogant people like money and they will never see it? Because the Bible tells us the secret. How does it come? By humility. Alongside the fear of God are riches, honor that you won't die of hypertension and life. By humility, even wealth. See, there are certain people you see they keep rising after 10 years 20 years 30 years you see a man that used to be a global phenomenon all his cars are packed now you see him trekking to the junction something has happened are you hearing me something has happened pride say lord grant me grace to be humble let's look at two more scriptures first peter chapter 5 verse 6 First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. I'm giving you all these scriptures because I want you to remember it. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. Hallelujah. Let's read it. One to read. Humble yourselves therefore under what? The mighty hand of God that he may. So let me bring good news. If you know you are humble right now, it's a matter of time. God is going to exalt you. Are you hearing me? And when God is exalting you, he doesn't need to consult with anybody. He will exalt you overnight. And when he exalts you, he will watch you. And he sees that you say, Lord, even at this level, I give you the glory. God will say, you are doing this for me. Take him higher. And you rise higher. You say, Lord, even at this level. Even at this level. There are certain men of God, their testimony has been from glory to glory. From glory. There are some men of God you can attach faithfulness to them. You can attach diligence to them. But you cannot attach humility to their life. They are not humble at all. Hallelujah. There are others you know. I'm not talking of simplicity. Simplicity is not humility. There are many simple and arrogant people. Hallelujah. That you say, okay... God gave you money to buy jeep. You say, me, I'm not worthy. I buy a bicycle. That's not humility. That's simplicity. You just feel like being like those in Singapore. You want to ride your bicycle all around. 
But that does not make you. You can be very, very arrogant. Pride and humility are of the heart. I've seen extremely blessed and humble people. I've seen extremely poor and arrogant people. In fact, there are more arrogant poor people than there are wealthy people. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 6. Last scripture on humility. James 4 verse 6. If you forget any scripture about humility, don't forget this. James 4 verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Who resists them? If God resists you, who will deliver you? Hallelujah. There are some people, they, they are not under demonic yoke. God himself is against them. He says, God resisted the proud. But what does he do to the humble? That means if you see that there is no grace multiplied in your life, go and check your humility. That's why you see certain people function. After a while, you will know. See, when a man grows in grace, you will know it. He doesn't need to say it. You see it. You know that this is another dimension of grace. Hallelujah. See, after me, I receive grace to be a man of character. There are some of you I'm preaching to because you are at the verge of compromising. You love God. You want to be relevant. Some of you are men of God. God have told you to sit down. You want to get up now. You are saying, Kai, the way this thing is going, is doing me out. Huh? They've already told me that they'll even give me two rooms to start church and counseling center. Sit down. God has warned you. You know the thing with God? He will speak once and he won't tell you anything again. You just go. And then you will face a rude consequence. Character. Number two. What it takes to be relevant. Progressive depth in the understanding and the teaching of the kingdom. Progressive depth. You want to remain current in what God is doing. There must be passion. There must be depth. You must keep digging deeper. Seeking to understand the truths of Jesus. The truths of the kingdom. The principles of the kingdom. This is one of the major reasons why many men of God are already out of sync with spiritual things. They got to certain dimensions and that was good. But they camped around there and thought that was all there is. And then as people started rising, see, there are some things that years ago, if they happen in the church, people will run away because people had not grown to that level. And certain men of God seem to be custodians of those dimensions. Now, anybody in any fellowship can walk. When people enter some dimensions, they start seeking more. And if you are not pressing, they will edge you out and continue moving. This is what has happened to a lot of people. Passion to keep knowing God more. Have you seen men of God that you listen to them? After seven years, there is no growth, nothing new, nothing fresh. You are not discovering anything. You are not excited about anything. You are not finding out a new dimension. You will not be sustained in the agenda of God. Progressive death. Three scriptures. Second Peter 3 verse 18. You must grow in progressive depth in the understanding and in the teaching of the kingdom. Because there is so much. Don't let any man deceive you. That there is nothing more to explore. Are you joking? There's a man called Richard Sigmund. Please listen to me. He went to heaven. One of the few people who's going to heaven we can trust. Hallelujah. We have not finished the series. <laughs> we are coming back. Praise God. He went to heaven and he went into a room called the library. The library that God himself wrote books about himself for people to keep exploring about him even in heaven with the renewed mind. And he saw someone sitting there and reading one of the books. Listen please. It was a library of many books. And when he entered, he saw the man and he came to the man. He said, how long have you been sitting here? And the man told him that in earth's time is two millennia. 
he has been sitting for two millennia and he checked the book he was on page two page what what you call rema let me tell you this is why demons don't move when they hear they say what is rema we knew this thing since the time of moses you are knowing it today you are now jumping and calling it rema grow in grace and what in the knowledge of the lord grow 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 everybody say i'm growing where you were yesterday and the dimension that oh speak to this mountain it will move okay demons can do this okay this let me tell you a time will come if you don't move they will move you out of the way it's what has happened to a lot of people i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this. a genuine hear me a very serious man of god should be the type that can lead his congregation to a depth of pursuit are you getting what i'm saying some of you send me text messages and you say sir i just saw this scripture this and that and that and i look at the scripture and i'm like wow i've never seen this light and i pick up my bible no matter how late let me tell you my bible if i'm on the bed my bible follows me and my books you ask the people that know me if i wake up i'm carrying it i'm on the chair is there if i'm lying down on the bed as i'm lying here is is here if i just wake up i want to touch it and feel it because i can open it at any time when god fires something into my head i open it and check what are you saying some of you don't have a passion for the word of god you think revelation will just come because god likes you bible says, buy the truth it will cost you grow in grace are you growing in grace hear me if you have a church here or you're a pastor or those listening online if you are not growing in grace a time will come your members will exhaust every revelation you have to give them and they will go and look for something more at that time you will start getting angry correct this is what is happening with a lot of frustrated pastors they have refused to press deeper hallelujah now your member is coming to tell you i went for one program and they explained something to me say who, who asked you to go did i permit you so you are saying what i'm giving you here all this all this look let me tell you the remedy is to carry fire and carry unction john wesley says set yourself on fire and watch the world come to see you born and let me tell you as i'm talking make sure you are not thinking of another man of god you are the one i'm talking to you know we don't do tell them in koinonia tell who i'm talking to you philippians 3 verse 8 verse 10 sorry philippians 3 verse 10 are you growing in revelation when was the last time you had something new in your spirit that provoked you to study one scripture for two weeks when did you have something that made you to go and buy three or four books you said oh god jordan order this book order that book order this there are some of you your facebook youtube and all of these things they are avenues for you to dig deep there's nothing provoking you in my personal study now i'm studying the blood preparing for miracle service i tell you next week will be something else I, all through this month i've been studying on the blood if it is true that the blood is god's last card you know why because there are certain people who have come i've prayed for them and their situations have not changed and it has been disturbing me a lazy man of god who won't sleep i said did i die for you but you get angry and say lord this should not be you are praying if you pray for 10 hiv people and three get healed that's not a good record they are testifying and they are calling you emoji but what about the seven hallelujah if you pray for 10 people with cancer and one gets healed or 100 people with genotype and 20 get healed that's good clap appreciate god but there is more every time i go back i tell god lord there is more there are people who have had issues i could not solve open my eyes when you do that the heavens will be open god will say i have seen your heart 
you are not just getting rema so that you will be mog so that you will bombard and confuse people and compare spiritual things with spiritual things you have a desire to bring a revelation that will bring liberty to the body of christ look at me there are many people whose revelations have not profited the body of christ hallelujah Two days after you sit down, you cannot even remember what you had. The end of revelation is that you'll be liberated. I don't care what revelation you bring. At the end of it, if there are still demon-possessed people, there are still sick people, there are still oppressed people, they get back and they go into their frustration. You just did a religious jamboree. You must contend for revelation alongside the anointing to demonstrate it. Many people have rema that they copied and paste from one man of God. That's why there is no grace backing the revelation. They share it the way the man of God shared it, but they don't see what the man of God saw. The church is full of copy and paste Christianity because people are so frustrated. They are looking for anything that works. Anything. Right now, you just tune your TV. If they don't show people falling under the anointing in the advert, it looks like that ministry is not serious. So everybody, they go and start searching for videos that somebody, it doesn't matter what through the person, they just package it and push it together because everybody is trying to copy and paste. But there are men who carry a unique identity. When they come out, you know this is not copying. This one came from the secret place. Last scripture. Still, the same uh, Philippians verse 13 to 14 still Philippians 3 brethren I count not this is Paul everybody say Paul you know who Paul was let me tell you something Paul got his revelation directly from the spirit are you getting me it was him that wrote what we call the Pauline epistles he opened the body of Christ to dimensions of grace. Paul that was caught up in the spirit many times. He died many times and came back to life. And this is what he has to say. At the apex of his apostolic ministry. Brethren, I count myself to have what? Not to have apprehended. That means truly, oh, me to have not caught this thing. Ha! This is Paul speaking. He said, but one thing I do, hallelujah. He said, forgetting all the rema, forgetting the dimensions. Yes, I know I brought a new dimension. But he said, forgetting it and reaching forth unto those things that are what? Before. Verse 14. I press. Everybody say press. Everybody say press. That's the secret. There must be a dissatisfaction in your spirit. I go for meetings and sometimes when I'm teaching, People put their hands on their head and they are just looking at me. That's exactly what kills men of God. Hallelujah. I went for a meeting and we just had worship. Just worship the first session. And when we came out, some of the people were just sitting on the floor. They said, what have we been doing? And you as a man of God, when you see that, you just nod your head. Say, so even them, they will know that God tried for me. A day will come. The hunger of those people will rise. They will catch up with that dimension and they will move. And you would think they don't respect you. They respect you. You just stop moving. And they had to move ahead. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A lot of people say, this guy didn't used to greet me before. This was my boy. Yo. It's not the issue of boy. In the realm of the spirit, overtaking is allowed. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Never get to a point where you are satisfied. Listen, do you know there are times that I carry my former books, books that God taught me several things in the place of retreat, and I look at them. I have been teaching about them for years, but I sit down and I ask myself, Joshua Selman, do you really understand these things you have been teaching? Sometimes you need to tell yourself the truth and sit down. You have been teaching on faith. Sit down and you'll be shocked that you do not even understand it. Many of us have been teaching on tithing and you don't tithe. It means you have not yet gotten the revelation. Pause for a while and study your own messages. There is no koinonia message I've not listened to, including last week. And I don't collect it directly from the media. I download it myself. 
I want it to cost me. This message, this night now. Because I'm flogging myself. When I finish, I'll now go and play it and sit on the floor. And say, Lord, speak. Lash me, do everything. It's only me and you here. This is the secret of growth. There are men of God that have brought themselves to a point where it does not look like they can learn anything new again. Are you getting me? Even when they are reading the books of somebody else, it looks like, let me just see what this person wrote. Paradventure. If there is anything, I can pick one or two things. Ha. Pride. And it goes before a fall. Because Dr. Paul Enenche says, it is God that will use the calabash to fetch water so that he will disgrace the pot. Hallelujah. Calabash to fetch. When, when pot is saying, I'm the only one, God will say, calabash, come. You are wood and you have holes. He will fetch water with it and it will not pour. Say, if you will not praise me, I will raise stones and create mouth and head in them and give them a brain. And they will raise praise and worship while you stand there and you are watching me. May God not replace any one of us in this current move of the Spirit. I tell you, this is one of my greatest prayer points. I pray every time and I say, God, let Koinonia not get to a point where whatever it is would distract us. That's why you see, the way God helped us to design this ministry, the leaders do very little of administration. Are you getting me? I am almost not involved in the administration. What I do is generally just over. If you see me come out, I'm just coming to encourage the people. We have raised a robust leadership structure. Imagine that in the afternoon, I have to come and check and say, this decoration, did they do it well? And then I come and between my mouth in the evening. And while I'm talking, demons are shouting, amen. And then you say, come out. And the demons say, you, go out. They will drive you out of ministry. Some of you think we're in America. Let me tell you, you're in Nigeria. Africa. Hallelujah. That's why there are some days I don't let people just come to disturb me. I don't care what it is. You build yourself. Many ministers, one of the things that kill them is that they start doing administration and forget ministry. Hallelujah. Immediately after the program, treasurer come. How much is coming in now? I saw one man. What did he give? Open that white envelope. You see, when you leave the ministry of the word and prayer, and you start doing all kinds of administrative things, prognosing into departments that you set up, you set up the department, you are not allowing them to work. Imagine if I come here, I say, Mike, stand up. I can play keyboard, though. I hope you know that. And I see that I play. And then I say, Tosin, you are not getting this team. At the end of it, you won't do what you are supposed to do. And you come out and you see, let me tell you, where there is no fire, members are dangerous people. They know when this thing is not entry. They just keep looking at you because they respect you. At the end of it, they'll say, man of God, this, this message. Ah! And then on their way back home, they say, bros, nah, this thing, no way. Hallelujah. Number three. So number one, character. Number two, progressive depth in the understanding of the kingdom. Number three, this is very important. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Write it as long as I'm reciting it. Write it like that. Don't change it. I know why I put it. It may be too long, but it makes sense. I found a way of putting it. I found out that using synonyms will confuse you. Write it the way I'm dictating it. Are you ready? Write now. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ and of his kingdom. Through consistent, notable miracles, signs and wonders. Star consistent, star notable, or underline them. Grace to demonstrate in your meetings the reality of Christ and of his kingdom through consistent, notable miracles, signs, and wonders. You are not walking there, you will not last. Period and full stop. Hmm. Hallelujah. 
A lot of people say, me, God just called me to teach. He didn't call me into any healing or anything. If you are sick, come and sit down and hear the word. If the word doesn't heal you, go back home. Look, let me tell you. The Bible says Jesus was in a place teaching. He said, and as he taught, the power, the gospel itself is the power of God. So if there is no power backing it, what you are teaching is something else. Hallelujah. Number three, are, are you writing it? Okay. Look at me. Say miracles. Shout it, miracles. Say signs. Say wonders. Can I tell you, if you step into the miraculous, the worst that can happen is they will criticize you, but they will follow you forever. Forever. How many? Not, not 10 years. They will follow you when? Grace to demonstrate the reality of Christ. I told God, I don't want a kind of ministry I cannot prove what I'm teaching. You can say, oh, there are sinners in this place. Blah, blah, blah. At the end of you, say, now, those of you who are sinners, just go back home and uh, think through what I've shared. Are you joking? There's no power to make altar call. That's why we round up our meetings with prayers. If we teach you on impartation, be sure that at the end of it, there will be a mighty demonstration of the Spirit. If we call this meeting koinonia, and you come in, and you are surprised to see people falling under the anointing, that's why we call it koinonia intimacy oh i believe in miracles absolutely i have no there is no i'm not one of those ministers that say miracle is not really important look miracle is very important john 6 63 let's look at these things quickly i pray that something will come upon you this night in the name of jesus christ Listen, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The spirit that does what? That means if what I am speaking is truly of God, there should be a quickening. Is that true? The word quicken there means to give life. Is that true? To give life to your dead body, to restore you. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It said the flesh, empty talk, does not profit anything. It said the words that I speak, they are what? They are not just sermons. They are spirit and they are life. That means as I'm speaking to you, something should be happening to your spirit man. Hallelujah. Two scriptures. First Corinthians 4 verse 20. Charles and Francis Hunter, mighty generals who did great things for God. They said one miracle is worth a thousand words. One one authentic miracle everybody read one to read for the kingdom of god is not in but in the kingdom of god is characterized by a demonstration of power i'm not just talking of falling down and then you stand up and you cannot identify what happened to you that you fall down and stand up and know that something happened Hallelujah. There was a time Ben Hinn was just laying hands on people. They were falling. Or a robbers looked at him and said, Benny, don't just throw them down. Give them something. That means you can throw people down. A great man of God in John G. Lake's time. John G. Lake sat down and was watching him. He was ministering. He was laying hands on people. Over a hundred people. They were just falling down. When they finished, people were clapping. John G. Lake laughed and said, follow me to my office. When he got into my, the person's office, John G. Lake said, only 30 people were healed. All those other people you were playing on stage. These are the people you say men to. They were men. Generals indeed. Hebrews 2 verse 4. Oh, may your ministry be characterized by authentic signs and wonders. Current. Listen, I said notable, consistent, not one miracle per year. It's not enough to challenge people. God also bearing them witness. That means a miracle is a confirmation. God is stamping what you have, you have said. God also bearing them witness, both with what? 
signs and wonders and with what diverse heterogeneous miracles in different areas i'm not the man of god that believe that only the sick have a package to receive uh -uh. anybody bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed whether it was sickness whether it was whatever and the gifts of the holy ghost according to his will could it be that this is why your church is not growing that you are a great man of god with revelation but there is no grace to demonstrate the reality of what you are saying i don't mean this childishness that people do after meeting even when there is no reason they just call three ladies you have shared the grace you must force two of them to fall down that's not what i'm talking about there are men of god who are under pressure to show their anoint the moment they stand up they say there's a lady here stand up they waste people's time 30 minutes they are dead and they come one finger two fingers three they now push now they turn you when i was teaching my friends on the anointing i told them never turn a person's head this is nonsense brother if you have power it will show come on now hallelujah i'm not against if you caught a revelation of doing it i don't know it may mean losing the person from captivity i can't judge you are you getting me but one thing i want you to know is that when there is authentic power it will speak do you know what it means to speak and your words will throw a man down a man who is matured and standing minding his business you are talking and the word throws him down that's power my brother that's authentic power if it's not power do it <laughs> hallelujah i remember one of our brothers sadiq ibrahim how many of you remember him there are a few people that that occult guy that guy slept in the grave for three days how many days three days he got all kinds of power escaped from many prisons in this nigeria belonged to a cult called highlander he was dying of hiv and tuberculosis with all his jars he sat outside like this i came up on the stage and the holy ghost roared through me like a lion the brother said all he knew was he saw fire that was the end of it they carried him and brought him here you people saw him right healed of hiv healed of tuberculosis he got filled with the holy ghost the guy said when he was outside and he saw people falling he said yes there's power in this place whether it's of god or it's babala there is sharp power in this place look let me tell you i say this not to brag there are many of you if it's not because of the demonstration of the power of the spirit you will not come here many of you saw something that troubled you we were sitting outside when somebody ran outside by himself you just said ah next sunday you gathered all your stubborn brothers from home and said let's go i'm tired of this trouble you are creating at home just come and sit down here some of you came here it was criticism that brought you you just came to criticize and when you sat down before the praise and worship will finish god started doing what he was going to do on you and see what has happened to your life now the power of the holy spirit this is why we believe but the balance here is when the power takes the place of the accurate teaching of the word that's when it becomes an error every meeting cannot just be power keep throwing people up and down up and down it is the word that builds and when i say word i don't just mean this word word men of god are saying the accurate teaching of scripture because what some people are calling word is not word it's just stories let's hurry up there are others but these are the most important aspects listen when you see any man or any ministry or any individual that is beginning to be etched out of the program of god these are some of the things that have gone wrong character is dwindling the person is no longer contending for debt hallelujah praise the lord and it happens when people start celebrating you they say ah 
you. Do you know this revelation you brought? I've never had it anywhere. Members can deceive you. Members know how to talk to you. No, just a man of God. Oh, the text, some of you write to me. If I follow your text, I would have died since. Since. Some of you just write the text. Oh, my father, where would I have been if this and that and that and that? Your grace, the oil on your life. And before that happens, I wrap my head. I say, you are not expanding anywhere. Remain there. Look at me. Could this be what has destroyed some of you now? Before you started leading prayers in your small fellowship, you were honestly humble and you used to seek God. But they made you to start leading prayers in your small fellowship. Right now, even where they told you to be sitting before, just say me now, see, there are levels in the spirit. I've paid my price and allow me to enjoy my thing. There are some of you who cannot go back and clean chairs in your churches again. Hello? You can't clean chairs in your churches again. Say me. I had a one brother that I think he was a pastor somewhere and the faculty, his faculty fellowship on campus there chose him to be something. I think chief usher or so. When they called him, the guy said him. God didn't tell me I'm going to serve as chief of usher. I said, ah, my brother, that chief usher is the best gift that God has given you because it will remind you at every time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I look forward to the time that I'll go for a meeting where there is a great man of God and there'll be nobody to play keyboard. And I'll just remember I used to be the music director. I'll just play and say, M.O.G., ride on, sir. And while I'm playing, I'm saying, Lord, whatever is on this man, I won't leave this place the same way. Pride. There are others, but I think I'll save them. Or let me just, there are three of them, I'll just list quickly. Prosperity, the spirit of excellence, and good leadership. These are the other three. But, you really don't need to emphasize this is what I want to get because the other three once I start talking of money now some of you will be happy I, I want this sacred this spirit of holiness that is in the atmosphere to remain I don't want any talk of money to come and scatter it that's why I don't want to talk about these other things there is an atmosphere right now that has been created if I start talking of money prosperity, spirit of excellence and leadership it will neutralize this lashing that God is doing for some of you now. So let's just leave it there. So that it will enter and cause change. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. The burdens you have carried For in the sanctuary God is here Please remain seated. We'll stand up in a minute and I want us to pray. Don't bow your head yet. There are some of you, you are at the verge of losing out on the agenda of God. Some of you are losing out on character. You are losing out on character. The way you have started behaving with ladies is calling for caution. You are just laughing about it. God is already pointing and saying, oh boy, you are going too far. You are going what? Too far. Listen, you need to be examining yourself. And may God bless you with friends that can have the courage to say, my brother, that hug was not a normal hug. You have been hugging for 10 years. The one you did this night, no way. Let's go, let's go and pray. Let's go and pray fast. If you do not have people around your life that can tell you this truth, you will die soon. Hallelujah. There must be people around your life that will not call you man of God. Say, my brother, what was happening? This program was happening. It's until they wave hand before you and who are you looking at? Say, truly, oh, me too, honestly. 
I love God, but this relationship thing needs let's pray. You see, God has helped you. If you do not have people around your life that can help you like that, you can stand and be entering the pit and be claiming you are standing till the day it covers you. People cannot find you again. Where are you? You are in the pit. Hallelujah. The Bible says to examine yourself. Don't surround your life with psychophants who are always telling you what is good alone. Let me tell you, you may hate them. And those of you who talk to people, talk to them in love. Don't carry your big mouth and start lashing people. Say, how can you? You're a man of God. You are now telling me you watch pornography as they help the brother. That he came and spoke to you. Whereas you too, that's what you did. Let him that stand take heed lest he falls. Character. Some of us do not have character at all. You run your mouth anyhow. The moment you step out of here, you carry koinonia and leave it in CGC. And you come out. They say, where I talk? Anybody that I will wash you down. Character. You want to be relevant? Who do you want to marry? I want to marry a man of God. I want to be a woman of God. With this your mouth, God will not take you there. No way. Hallelujah. There are some of you that just have this disdainful way of looking at people. When they are not rich, they are not your class. And there is a way you look at them. This guy that cannot even speak English, you keep tapping your neighbor and laughing at the person. One day you will look for a job and open the door of the office and see that it's the person you are laughing at who is going to give you the job. And the person will look at you and say, it's my turn to shine now. Number two, there must be a pursuit in your heart. See, the day you stop seeing the need to seek more of God, please stop coming for koinonia. There is no need. Koinonia is the place where when people are weary, are you getting me? When they know there is more, this is why we always keep the fire burning because there are some of you you travel and you go and meet some of these your godless friends around and they just water it down there are many people crying and begging that asu will just call up the strike not necessarily because they want to come back it's like fun they want to just blow some fresh air i need you i need you Nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you, I need you. For you satisfy the longing inside. I need you, I need you, I need you. I need you. For nothing, no place, no one else will do. My soul longs and even faints for you. My heart and my flesh cries out for the living God, for the living God. Incline your ears with trembling and tears of yearning. Was a revelation to the throne of grace to seek your face. I'm burning, longing for you. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. For nothing, no place, no one else will do. I need you, I need you, I need you, I need you. For you satisfy. Revelation, you must contend for revelation. Be ever learning. No matter what level you get, humble yourself to learn. Not just those from those who are greater than you. You can learn from children. You can learn from animals. If you maintain a teachable heart. Number three, contend for authentic power. 
I tell you, we have a very, very, very powerless church. There are just few powerful men of God. It's my desire to see that the least among us here is working in dramatic levels of grace. Even if you are not called into the fivefold ministry, that when we begin to give testimonies here, we'll hear that you raised the dead at home. We'll hear that you did mighty things, that you spoke over lives and territories. This is our joy. Not what God did through the ministers, but what God is doing through you. This is our satisfaction. Hallelujah. Rise up on your feet. For seven minutes, all the hands of everybody around you we are going to pray in tongues. Seven minutes of fire and praying in tongues. Rakata baladabash. Go ahead. Zeladabashakata baladaba. Participate. Reketeketekebakata baba baba baba. number one in the next two minutes flog it out with God whatever you know in your life hear me that is not showing good character I don't care what it is especially lack of integrity and pride you're going to pray right now see let me tell you humble yourself in this place tonight if it's masturbation if it's pornography if it's immorality are you getting me if it's theft if he's smoking, if he's drinking, if he's backbiting, slander, whatever can make you irrelevant. I'm not doubting your salvation. Open your mouth and say, Lord, prune it out of me now. Lift your voice and pray. Take it, 
examination personal examination I say Lord am I beginning to have an unusual desire for women or money or pride or ministry see when you see a man who is in the presence of God you will never see a challenge in his life for a long time after a short time you don't see it again that's a sign that he went to the presence of God men don't just fall overnight it's a progression of carelessness progression of carelessness hallelujah number two we are going to pray you're going to say lord open my eyes let revelation i i i i refuse to brag at the level i am now spiritually i humble myself there is more take me there lift your voice and pray Shalabonga <laughs> Understanding. Hallelujah. You are going to pray and say, Lord, let the unction to back up the things I've been telling people, let the anointing to demonstrate the reality of these revelations. Otherwise, men will think I'm lying. Say, Father, from the throne, let fresh power lift your voice and pray. Fresh power, the power of the Holy Ghost for signs. For wonders, miracles, diverse demonstrations. Power, power. In the name of Jesus, we receive power. Power to the throne principality. Power to heal the sick. Power to set the captives free. Power to liberate destinies that have been bound. Power to save sinners. Power to command results. To command victory. Hey, Karababababababa. Shake it, take it, take it. Holy Ghost, we ask you, let there be a rain. Of fresh power, fresh fire, fresh power, fresh fire. Power for signs, power for wonders, power for miracles to shut the gates of darkness. Power over territories, power over HIV, power over cancer, power over. 
that has made some of your loved ones to deny the grace of God upon your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Whenever they cry, you join them and cry too. Whenever they seek for help, you are helpless before them. But tonight, in one more minute, you are going to say, Lord, it won't happen like this again. I am tired of joining unbelievers. Let my coming for Koinonia show out there. Let my coming for Koinonia let it show that I'm contacting power. <laughs> Don't let anybody fool you. The earth responds to power, my brother. He said, Behold, I give you authority over all the powers of the enemy. Listen. Hear me. We cannot come into your homes. We cannot meet your loved ones. That's why we are training you. We are setting you on fire. That you will go and be the ambassador. Of what good is it? If we keep training you. And then we are the ones who keep traveling to, your, to help the people. That from today. You say I'm an ambassador. I'm not ordinary again. Whether you're a man or woman. See, listen. Hear me. Hear me. The Holy Ghost is ministering to me. We are going to pray against the spirit of fear. Many of you have this anointing. But the boldness, not to do foolish things, but to take steps. The boldness to make declarations and tell your family members, I know you know me as your child, but I'm speaking as an ambassador of heaven. That fear and shame, cast it right now. Lift your voice and pray one minute. Fear that stops me. Oh, God, 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 you are anointed. God has not given you the spirit of fear. Fear of your past. You must not be a man of God or a woman of God as it is. You are an ambassador. You are an envoy. Afra, take a I command fear out of God's people. I command humility. Bold as lion. Bold as lion. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 When it comes to dealing with people, they should see you as gentle as a dove. Are you hearing me? You are cautious. You are loving. You are forgiving. Somebody does something against you and thinks you are going to destroy him and say, bless you. Don't worry. 
But when it comes to dealing with devils, you can't be a dove. Come on now. Hallelujah. See, there are many of you, the devil is sitting on your destiny happily because you are not angry enough. Are you hearing me? Some of you don't fast. Some of you don't pray. Can I tell you something? It's my personal recommendation that an average believer should fast at least once in a week. We have not been taught. A lot of people say the era of fasting is where you get out those demonic teachings out of your way. That's why the people are not powerful. The devils keep moving around. Let me tell you. Not, not out of religion. You can start from once in two weeks. As a worker here, as a leader, you, I don't know how people live. At least once in a week, dedicate some time. Not this fast that you are dragging already from 8 o'clock, waiting for 4 or 5. Once it's 4, you just say, where is the food? You gather your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you want to revenge. No. See, it's time for you to begin to undo many teachings that are frustrating your Christian life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Fasting is part of the kingdom keys that set any man on fire. No. Demons know those they can oppress. There are others that oppress demons. The Bible says, I have sent carpenters to terrorize these homes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Make it a point of duty. At least once in a week. Dedicate some time. Wait upon the Lord. Even if you cannot wait all day. You can start from 6 to 12. Hallelujah. Spend the time praying. Sleep under a message. Get Gather some of these hot koinonia messages. Put them together. And fire your spirit. And see the demon that will remain there. Hallelujah. It's our goal to make you on fire. I'm telling you. It will save you a lot. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. And there are two things I'm praying for you this night. And then we'll round up. Number one is a hunger like never before for the things of the spirit some of you your hunger is dry that's the honest jesus truth prayer life zero word life zero you just have many messages you are not listening to them hallelujah you mix all kinds of ungodly useless musics that will not take you anywhere. I've told you these things, brothers and sisters. I preach to you in love. Get those things out of your phones. Don't say it does not matter. You are on assignment. You are an envoy. You are going somewhere to happen. Hallelujah. Number two is I'm going to pray for you that beginning from this week, may you begin to see results. Are you hearing me? Not just results in your life, but that God will begin to use you for God's sake, so that some people that have been doubting your God will share a testament that will let them believe. Lift your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you. When I pray, I just want you to shout amen as you receive. I pray that a hunger like never before will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that those whose prayer lives have died from this night, grace will come upon you. You will stretch for hours without knowing. Some of you used to wake up every night at least for 10 minutes, 30 minutes. Once it's 12 or 1, you know it's your time. You stretch for some minutes. Right now, you sleep like, you sleep like a baby till morning. Generals don't do like that. From tonight, let your prayer altar be restored. 
in the name of Jesus. There are some of you, aside from today, the last time you read your Bible was last week. It's not like you don't want to read it. But when you try, there is a disinterest, I pray. That power of darkness that makes the word of God of irrelevance. I cast it out of your life right now. I cast it out of your life right now. I cast it out of your life right now. Tonight, may your Bible become your best friend. A man of God says your bag is not fashionable if it does not have a Bible inside. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for you. Koinonia, let me tell you the truth. Our joy, my joy, is not to see one man of God doing mighty things. And then there are many helpless people who come to stand to receive. I want to pray for you. Lift your hands. Father, whatever grace you have put upon this house, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that for as many who believe tonight, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, the anointing is going to fall on some of you in a mighty way. At the count of three, you will take this grace now. One, two, Three, take it, take it now, 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 take it now. I release upon you the grace of the house. Take it, take it, take it, take it outside, everywhere. Take it. Whether you are falling or not, it's not the issue. Receive it. Let the fire upon the house fall on you. Let the fire upon the house consume you. Whatever we can do, may you do it. Whatever sickness is healed here, may it be healed through your hands. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Please everybody listen. We're out of time. I want you to keep standing. I want to make an altar call right now. There are many of us who came here searching for answers. Health answers. Academic answers. You are tired of your life. And you know that there is something more. I want to introduce you to this man. Jesus. The true solution to every man's predicament that guarantees you a victorious life in this world and even in the life to come. There are many of you who are tired. You have asked questions that people cannot answer. Hallelujah. And you came here this night. For many of you, you were weary. You dragged yourself here. I want you to know that it's time to make a genuine decision for Jesus. Some of you have given your heart to the Lord once. Honestly, you have. But because of the cares of life, you derailed from the ways of God. Tonight, God is giving you a new beginning. These two categories of people. Right now, I want you to leave your seat outside, inside. Leave your seat quickly and run out here. Nothing to be ashamed of is a new beginning. Don't wait for anybody. You are the first person. God bless you. They are coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come and line up here. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for coming. It's a new day. It's a new day. Koinonias, encourage them. Encourage them. No matter where you are outside, keep coming. You came to honor your friend's invitation. But God is calling you tonight. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. There are many of them outside. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. Keep coming. Keep coming. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are, keep coming. The Lord is bringing you. Bless you, my sister. Bless you, my brother. Don't let anybody stop you. There is a power that will set you free. It's a new beginning. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute all of you here. For making this bold decision 
are you listening to me you didn't come just to look at a man it's a new beginning for you hallelujah i'm going to lead you to the lord right now listen let no man condemn you god can give you a new beginning i don't care what you have done there is love in this place the bible says for as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away the lord is showing me two people outside the lord is showing me two people outside the holy ghost is ministering to you and saying you should join us there are two people outside please leave your seat and come for the sake of your salvation god is speaking to me there are two people outside two people outside two people outside don't remain there don't remain there don't remain there hallelujah now all of you in front lift your hands very high and i want you to say this prayer after me from the depths of your heart listen jesus is in this place i want you to say it with revelation say after me lord jesus tonight i make up my mind to walk with you to live for you and to serve you all the days of my life i repent of sin i repent of my shortcoming let your blood speak for me this night i have heard your word i repent of my sins i invite jesus into my heart be my lord and savior write my name in the book of life from today the power of sin over my life is broken every habit everything that is not of god i'm I've do, i'm doing away with you right now and i will never return to you from today i am a new person this is a new beginning for me in the name of jesus christ now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to yourself and i pray that you will honor them i pray that you will lift them whatever burdens and cares that they brought before you lord let it be rolled away supernaturally this night i pray that from today let grace come upon them that this will not be an emotional decision let this be a decision that will last make mighty men and women of god out of these ones in the name of jesus dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the face of development lord grant me the discipline 